Oh, ik ben Ruben Dijkstra. Ik ben Ruben Dijkstra. En during my graduation period, I explored the fire resistance of a ceiling board in a parking garage fire. And I received um, substantive help from the engineers. First, I'm going to talk about the cause, what led up to the research. Next, I'll describe the background to parking garage fires, different design methods. We have different design methods for parking garage that I'll describe and the fire scenario in the parking garage, as well as the uh, calculations and the results I obtained. And then I'll wrap up with some conclusions. Yeah. Following some parking garage fires in recent years, designers have become better aware of the dangers in parking garages, especially the fire in the parking garage at uh, the Lloyd's in Rotterdam, where there was damage to uh, the parking garage. Especially, there, there was a lot of uh, tearing in the panels on the floor. And designers saw this damage and went to visit Rockfon to ask whether they could protect our paneled floors through the facet panels. Well, this was news to Rockfon because Rockfon applied it to insulate heat for heat and noise. Then Rockfon tested the uh, composite slabs based on the standard fire curb applied to determine fire resistance of construction components in buildings. Then Rockfon tested the facet composite slabs against standard fire along a curve of 120 minutes. And, but a car park fire is likely to include um, uh, heat, a high heat release rate. And this can affect the uh, fire resistance of these facet slabs. And this was caused to conduct investigation on them. The purpose of the study is to determine whether the facet slabs can be applied as a fire resistance facility to protect during um, a car park fire. The main question, seeing it, is answering it. How did the fire scenario materialize in a car park? And when the thermal load in the car park is known, can you determine what to do in an unprotected um, composite slab floor or in a protected composite slab floor? There are two relevant car park fires that we investigated for this study. One was at the Harbor Edge Lloydstraat in Rotterdam. There was a, st a striking damage pattern that I just described. It was the uh, tearing of the uh, channels and the collapse of the composite slab floor. At the time of the fire, this car park met the requirements for a naturally ventilated car park. So to meet these requirements, some, op some apertures were inserted in the walls to um, uh, to divert the, the smoke and fire. So this should make it possible to approach and extinguish the fire, but that wasn't the case in this situation because the car park fire lasted 120 minutes and uh, severe damage was the result to the composite slab floor, which had already been tested according to the standard fire curve as being fire resistant for 120 minutes. Then the fire at the Appalar car park in Harlem, that lasted a total of six and a half hours, and it was impossible for the fire department to intervene, and there was a lot of damage to the cars and the floor structure. TNO investigated the damage pattern in uh, the car park at the Lloydstraat in Rotterdam. This shows a uh, composite slab floor without a superficial layer. And when the bottom part expands due to heat, the composite slab deforms and leads to 
horiz vertical tears in the composite slab floor so that the composite slab floor is to, uh, torn to um, uh, channel the load. In the other situation, there's a superficial layer that's 50 millimeters thick, and when that layer is present, the bottom layer does not expand due to heat, but the bottom of the composite slab floor tries to expand, which leads to horizontal tears and to the collapse of the composite slab floor. Now, to avert this damage, the BFN uh, sent out a letter, and the letter describes when protection is necessary for a composite slab floor. And this letter read to the, the guideline 0203 to be amended for classes 2A, 2B, and 3, a maximum top layer thickness of 50 millimeters. When this is exceeded, an additional measure needs to be taken to avert damage. For example, by limiting, you can do this by limiting the temperature on the bottom of the composite slab floor. This graph reveals that the concrete starts uh, wavering at 200 degrees. If the temperature does not rise above 200 degrees, there will be no consequences for the strength of the concrete. This corresponds with a letter of the PFBN that I just mentioned. So this should be the review criterion. As long as uh, the temperature of 200 um, degrees is not exceeded, there will be no uh, no damage to the precast concrete floor. The building's degree holds that a compartment may not exceed 1,000 square meters, but in the Netherlands, we often want a larger surface, and this is possible, but then you need to find an equivalent solution. In the Netherlands, there tend to be three equivalent solutions that are applied. You can use automatic extinguishing, uh, mechanical ventilation, and natural ventilation. And I'll be telling you more about this briefly in the next uh, in the next slide, and I'll describe the possible scenar fire scenarios as well. In a car park described according to the building's degree, the fire is ensured by limiting the compartment to 1,000 uh, square meters, and then the uh, distances for walking are curtailed as well. So then you have small parking garages with few open areas, and that means the fire will expand to a compartment fire. But the facet plates have already been tested for this. And the consequences are already known. Self extinction, automatic extinguishing through a sprinkler system will limit the fire to a single car and minimize the damage to, to the structure. Automatic extinguishing enables the fire department to intervene in the fire and to uh, finish extinguishing the fire. Mechanical ventilation ensures diversion of smoke and heat and discloses a view of the fire, as you can see on this visual, so that upon arrival, the fire department can approach and extinguish the fire to limiting it to two to three cars and also minimizing the damage. In naturally ventilated parking garages, it depends on the number of openings in the parking garage, which uh, divert heat and smoke. When the heat and smoke are not properly diverted because the ventilation is impossible to direct them, the fire department cannot uh, intervene in extinguishing the fire, and they'll simply let the fire burn itself out. And that in that case, the fire may spread to an entire row of cars, and the damage uh, to the cars and the structure is very serious. The major damage and the huge fire is considered to be decisive in a naturally ventilated car park. In car parks, the uh, fire is likely to flash over from car to car. If the fire does flash over to a new car, then it's almost uh, burnt out in the previous car. So that means that there's a local load in addition to the fires in that transitions to a global fire to the in the other burning cars in the car park because they generate a layer of smoke 
and the global load. The thermal load in the car park uh, depends on the uh, heat release rate of the cars and the time between flashover between the cars because if the fire flashes over quickly to the adjacent car, multiple cars will be burning at the same time and the uh, joint heat release rate will be very high. The ventilation geometry of car parks are another factor in the heat release rate of the car and the thermal load that materializes. The combustion the com combustion capacity of a car is based on the curves depicted here. And there's a phenomenon that's perceived where the adjacent car preheats. The preheated car will erupt in flames uh, sooner and faster. In flashovers, we assume the situation, uh, the fire scenario at car park in Lloydstraat. Flashover to cars parked opposite took place in 10 to 15 minutes. But I've also discovered from the research that flashovers will take place to cars parked opposite, so that you need to assume that in the decisive situation. As for the local thermal load, we used a kappa feed to uh, plot this and compared it to results with, from other studies. So I uh, extrapolated the red curve, which is decisive, and applied it as the car fire curve. If you compare the red line to the standard curve, which is the green line, you notice that the standard fire curve will exceed the other one early on. So this can um, affect the fire resistance time of the facet panels. The overall thermal load has been calculated based on ozone, which you can use to calculate the temperature of the heat layer. And this is based on the fire burning itself out. And if you assume that and that the fire is fully in progress, then the temperature in the parking garage is 281 degrees centigrade. And there's no flashover, so no compartment fire. Now that we know the thermodynamic load, you can um, apply this calculation to the structure as well. I devised the Voltra model to this end, which is the which determines the heat transport in the structure. To check the Voltra model, I calculated this based on the standard fire curve, and the results are depicted in the middle three lines, which I then compared with the previous practice fire by uh, rock fun in the standard fire curve. And the minimum and maximum values are the red and the green lines you see. The values correspond very closely, so the calculation is probably right. Next, I calculated this based on the car fire curve. And I calculated that uh, the fire, the standard fire curve is slightly exceeded, but the temperature at the bottom surface of the precast concrete slab uh, is less than 200 degrees centigrade, so there's no reduction in this characteristic strength of concrete. And the critical value of the temperature on the line is not exceeded, so the facet panels will remain in place if the fire is present there. Now, my conclusions relating to the fire scenario. The, the fire scenario should be based on one in a naturally ventilated parking garage where the uh, scope of the uh, fire is greatest. For the heat release rate, the kappa phi fire curves are the closest simulation. The time of a flashover between cars should be based on the possibility of the fire flashing over to the, ne the next car. If the floor is exposed to a car fire, the floor might uh, start uh, be, to be damaged and tear and may even collapse. It depends on the uh, thickness of the top layer. But if the floor is protected by rock von facet panels, then and if the 200 degrees at the bottom of the floor is not exceeded, the floor retains 
retains its strength. So that answers the main question in the study. The temperature, if the uh, if the uh, precast concrete slab floor is um, protected, then the 200 degrees won't be exceeded, and the concrete won't uh, lose its strength, and there won't be any uh, tears at the bottom of the precast concrete floor. So that's why the facet panels are a good way to prevent damage uh, to the floor in the event of a car park fire. Thank you very much for your attention. Are there any questions? We have time for one or two questions. Does anybody have a question? I have one more question. Question is an audible. It's about the bottom of the floor collapsing. No, it's not possible because the panels will remain suspended because the glue, the temperature of the glue doesn't exceed the critical temperature. Inaudible question. Interpreter apologizes. Um, I did some research on seams that emerge between the panels. The seams might be up to three millimeters, and that's that will work. But if there's a duct nearby, then you'll need to move that toward the middle of the slab. But I didn't really investigate the channels very thoroughly. Ricardo. Ricardo. If I understand you correctly, this is a check question. I understand that you uh, reviewed all kinds of models for simulating fires in car parks. And have you concluded that the Kappa Phi model is the right one, despite the fact that you uh, questioned it at first? Kappa Phi is intrinsically a good model. It's a bit simpler than the CFD simulations are. I was also working on the CFD simulations for a few weeks. But this model was too sophisticated for me to obtain optimal results. So that's why I continued with the Kappa Phi model. Very good. OK, thank you very much, Ruben, for uh, disclosing your insights in your presentation.